for China, for Thailand, uh, to argue only that there has been an imbalance in the past, that civil and political rights have been too much promoted and we haven't looked at development and economic and social rights, which was the Asian argument for a long time. Um, then, to me, the, I agree with this. I think this is very important. But then the burden has to be on these countries to engage in that debate rather than turn human rights into strictly a, a, a zero-sum game. It's not going to be your, your way, so we don't do human rights. Most people around the world, all people around the world, have an interest in having enough food on the table, in social justice, in health care, whether you're in Thailand or in America or China or anywhere. So how are these values, as well as participating in their own government, the democratic values and the social justice values, are equally important. For that to become more powerful in the world, it's very, it, it, I think it will only come if those countries who have been arguing for these values in the past take them on seriously at the Human Rights Council in international negotiations uh, and don't simply use non-interference and sovereignty as a reason to make a shield against human rights as a concept. The reason is, if you don't have some form of global ideology of which human rights is right now to the extent that there will be conflicts and potentially big conflicts what is the global architecture and governance and what are the ideas that will resolve those conflicts world war ii came out of the failed global architecture of world war one the league of nations was not powerful enough and didn't represent the interests of the world anymore and the idea the ideology which was self-determination was pure hypocrisy. Everyone saw that. Germany saw that. Japan saw that. So they said, we want to take our own colonies. Will the World War II architecture be strong enough with reform to deal with the crises that we will see in the future? I think that is a critical question. It's a question of Security Council reform. It's a question of reforming the global ideology when it comes to human rights. How will that be done? I hope that is done. And as I close, one thought which is China, is part of the Security Council as a veto, as a permanent member, by chance, not by power. China, when the UN was created, was very weak. It was put onto the Security Council by the United States, who wanted the vote of China, because that was before the communist takeover. In fact, the UK objected very strongly, tried to fight to keep China off, because they said, this is a vote for the US. So just imagine if China had not been included, and it easily could not have been, and of course, communist China was deprived for 20 years of this. If China had not been included, you would have a much greater global crisis right now, because you would have to reform the Security Council immediately. With China on, it almost retards the chance of change. Um, but I think we do need change, and that change has to include the, idea, the ideological change, which is the human rights model which means a development economic and social rights paradigm as much as a civil and political rights paradigm. And for, I think, our children's future, this is something that we need to grapple with. And I think Asia has a role to play that is a positive role, not, not an obstructing role, which to some extent the critics will say has been the case in the past. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Norman, for uh, your presentation. Um, now we have uh, some time left uh, until 8 o'clock, right? <laughs> um, so I'd like to give uh, 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 the floor uh, to the participants. So if you have some questions, please uh, raise your question. Hello. <laughs> I'm Surachai Nira from the Office of the National Security Council. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Dr. Roger Norm Norman very much uh, for giving us ideas on the issues of uh, human rights. What I would like to ask you is about the balance uh, between national security and uh, the uh, principles of human rights. Do you have any idea to balance between the, uh, the two uh, uh, of, of that? 
Um, I look at your challenge of global ideology with the human rights. Um, are there any research or studies right now on just the basic definition of, of human rights around the globe? And, um, and whether the, you know, the human rights around the globe is, is, um, is generalized on, on the four factors of freedoms. For example, um, the freedom of expression, to me, with my um, bare eyes, I don't see it's equivalent from this part of the world and um, in comparison to other parts of the world. So, so is, is, is there any kind of, um, you know, the research right now on the, the human right, on, 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 on the people themselves um, with, the, with the very definition of this? Thank you. Uh, I'll try to address the questions which were, I think, very challenging questions and uh, involve, uh, it's a complex idea the interrelationship of national security and human rights. Um, I think that the, the position that we would take is that national security uh, needs to incorporate human rights to be, uh, to be real national security. In other words, the nation uh, and looking out for the best interests of the nation uh, requires that the policies, laws, practices uh, respect the rights of the people in the nation, that this is fundamental and that where, uh, where say, governments have uh, vi violation practices, this will undermine national security, both internally but also in terms of international relations. But it is a, the reason it's a difficult question, I think, is in today's context, the context of terrorism and counterterrorism measures. That's often where this issue comes up. Uh, and here, uh, I think that we've, uh, the ICJ has done quite a large study, uh, which I alluded to earlier, that, that focused uh, very much on the policies of the U.S. and Western countries, but we also held hearings throughout Asia, throughout Africa.